force. Force is a push or a pull. Forces are acting up on us all the time. And I know when we think of force, we always think of gravity that keeps us weighted down. And then when we think of force, we think of friction. Friction that slows us down so that we're not gliding and sliding all over the place. But force acts upon our buildings, upon our chairs, upon every object. And so a force can be pushing down, like on this tower, but it can also be pushing up on this tower. And so force can be a push or it can be a pull. Forces that act upon buildings through storms are caused by wind. Wind can be really strong and can get up to 150 miles per hour like in a hurricane storm. And when those winds begin to act up on that building, it can literally destroy that building. It can lift that building up in the air. It can lift the roof off of that building. It can push that building over to the side. Also, when that storm is pushing through and that wind is pushing through, it can the force can be so strong it pushes the water and can end up flooding a city. Well, today we are going to look at force and how it acts up on this tower. Welcome to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher, where it's all about science. We are going to build a simple tower and work as engineers to design a plan that can that can have a tower to with, withstand wind and to come up with some designs that can help a building stand stronger or last longer. I have built a simple tower using straws, um, index cards, jumbo paper clips, and to hold it up, I just put some sand in some cups so that it will hold up. But the straws are loosely in the sand. And so my tower that I've built is 8.5 inches tall. And the lower uh, part of the tower is about 3.5 inches in between the top tower. And so what we're going to do, we're going to first test the tower as it is and then try out a couple of things to see if we can make it better to withhold against the force of wind. We're going to do test one. Notice that the tower is leaning. What can we do to support the structure so that the tower will not lean over to the side? Okay, so that force pushed the tower over and it leaned. But we want the structure to not lean. We want to give it some type of support. So we're going to take some string. it and see if this will support it some. We're going to put it at an angle. While I'm doing this, what do you think? Will this support it or not? I want to make it tight. There we go. All right, so now let's do our next test. Make a prediction. Will the tower continue to lean over to the right or will it be able to stand up? Okay, test number two. And I want you to look at what's going on even with the string. Oh, all right. We see that it's still leaning and even the string is wobbling.
let's come up with another idea. What do you think I should do? Since it's still leaning, I'm going to cut a second piece of string and try it on this side to see if it gives it some more support. I'm going to tape it on. Now that I have both sides with support, what do you think will happen this time when the force of wind acts up on this tower? Test three. Did you make your predictions? Amazing. The tower is withstanding the force of the wind. Why is the tower withstanding the force of the wind now? So you observed that the tower withstood the wind. Why did it withstand the wind and not sway to the side? Because of tension. I put two strings, one on each side, and it gave it the support and it gave it some tension here so that it's not swaying. What does this remind you of? What type of bridge? Yes, the suspension bridge. And so we have on this tower some support from the strings, the cables. Your job as an engineer is to construct a tower at least 12 inches tall. You can use index cards, the straws, paper clips, tape. You can use scissors if you would like to cut your, um, your index cards or cut your straws and design a tower that can withstand the force of wind. Now, notice that I use tension using the string. You come up with something different to support your tower so that it doesn't lean. Brainstorm, make a plan, create it, test it, and then make improvements. That is the engineer and design process. Thank you for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you on another video at my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher.